Blessings Upon Blessings. This is J-Units from Richmond, VA. Please stay tuned for Season 7 of Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show, created and hosted by Apostle John E. Ross. And we are J-U. Trying to do what's right, but end up Lord, please give me another chance. Make me alone. I want you to have. Very diverse, but we share the same universe. Differences are a tapestry, colorful and rich for us to see. Beautiful patterns everywhere. Oh, oh, oh. beautiful patterns everywhere. Power and control are no answer. It's ravaged the world like cancer. The noise is deafening. Please turn it down. Oh, oh, oh. Listen with love and heal one another. Cause round the globe, round the globe, we're bringing sun. Encouraging words will bring hope When we'll feel lost and cannot cope Universal love makes us one Let's raise our voices in unison Our circumstances are intentions Our circumstances are intentions
blessings and more grace in the name of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. I am your gospel radio apostle, Apostle John E. Ross, creator and host of this podcast, lead apostle and founder of the Omega International Prophetic Ministries, and thank you for tuning in for Season 7 of Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show. And Kingdom, our guest for this episode in Season 7 of Let's Talk to the Lord is international independent songwriter and recording artist Clarissa Stephan. Kingdom Clarissa's the founder of Round the Globe Music for Global Healing and executive director at Coaching Choice College. Clarissa Stephan, welcome to Let's Talk to the Lord. Well, thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of your program. And today I wanted to start off with a thought from a verse from the Colossians, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Amen. And before we begin our discussion, Sister Stephan, please share with us your story of repentance and your journey to relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, I love that question, and I thought about it in depth, because my parents always taught me that my faith is about my relationship to the Lord. And it's an important aspect of our lives because it really helps us through many, many difficult, you know, situations that we can experience in life. And so it got me thinking about the word repentance and what does that really mean? And when we get lost or we, you know, depart from our moral thinking or our moral teachings, we suffer in some ways. And I broke this down into six different concepts that are related to repentance. And these concepts are trauma, loss, life balance, resilience, sustainability, and purpose and meaning. And part of the human condition is that we experience trauma and loss, and some people more than others, and sometimes repeatedly. And it can be hard to find life balance and our faith can bring us to that life balance. And resilience is so important because it keeps us healthy. And it isn't enough to just be resilient in one situation or circumstance because sometimes we are experiencing more losses in life than just once. And so we have to be able to sustain them. And the other part of being human is to find purpose and meaning in our life so that we have value. And that connects back to those moral values so that we don't lose our way. Related to all of these, and I want to talk about this a little bit later as we get into talking about uh, music and healing, is overcoming shame. Because that's part of the repentance, you know, is that we need to be able to experience a feeling of shame if we've done something wrong. But sometimes in our culture we can become burdened with a sense of shame that troubles our identity and makes us feel inadequate. And that's not the Lord's intention, intention for us. Amen. So, so yeah. what is your status now in the body of Christ and in the kingdom of God? Well, I was raised in a family, like I said, that was richly moral. And we were sent to parochial schools. And, you know, what that meant is basically the word, I was raised Catholic, and the word Catholic or Catholicism means universal love. And in the time I grew up, there was a lot of social unrest. There was, um, you know, riots going on. There was just a lot of, of problems. And, you know, so at that time, there, were, there was a lot of harshness in the teachings in the church. And so I've, you know, seen many, many uh, people fall away from the church and lose their way because there is a difference between discipline and punishment. And sometimes the, the, you know, the human approach to it was to punish rather than to offer discipline. So, you know, when we have punishment, it causes fear and anxiety, whereas discipline gives us structure and it helps us learn what we need to learn. 
uh, and you know religion and faith really can be a beautiful discipline and so when that teaching gets distorted and becomes more about punishment it really can be viewed by humans as more of an abuse you know and so people experience shame when that happens and uh, they fall away and then more of that trauma and loss happens and so part of my mission has been to restore some of the healing so that people can find their way back to their faith and to be able to be strong and uh, to, to feel that love that is meant to be there for us through Christ's teachings. Amen, amen, and amen again. <laughs> Sister Stefan, please announce our topic, begin our discussion, and let's go to the Word of God. Wonderful. Well, today we're going to talk about healing through music. And, you know, music has always united people in ritual and ceremony, um, life events, social happenings, and you find it in religion and spirituality and also in secular music. And it's a way to transport us so that we can experience our consciousness in different levels and we can find that meaning and purpose that I was talking about to connect to ourselves and also to connect to God um, and to each other, you know, to form these healthy relationships. So music has a lot of purpose in our lives and it can help us heal from those losses and trauma and traumatic events. And it can help us adapt and connect uh, to each other so that we don't feel isolated. The other thing I think that, you know, we're uh, susceptible to when we experience trauma and loss is the sense of abandonment. Uh, As humans, we can feel abandoned and we can become confused and think that God has abandoned us. And, you know, when people, yeah, and and when people make, you know, moral um, indiscretions, let's say, you know, they then can really abandon themselves, you know, and even feel more complex abandonment as if God has totally forgotten them. So music has a strong purpose to help people feel their feelings, and feelings are universal. You know, they're in all cultures. Um, There's some consistent feelings that we all share, And it doesn't matter if we don't speak the language, we can see through facial expression or we can feel it in music and can communicate to one another through music. So that's been part of my um, effort is to bring an integrative music that will um, transcend barriers, you know, and there's so many different barriers socially that we can also experience through prejudice and Um, let's say through financial uh, and social position differences, um, through privilege. Um, And yet, all of these things that I was talking about earlier in regards to repentance are part of the human condition and that it doesn't matter where you come from, you can experience trauma and loss or imbalance in life. Um, It may look different you know, depending on where you come from. But um, so, you know, I'm just thinking that, you know, music can be therapeutic and spirit music can really help us uh, heal and, like I said before, can connect in such a way that sometimes we transcend those barriers or those things that keep us from not uniting to one another. So I'm kind of invested in, the concept of universal love, and that's led me to write music with people from all around the world. And, uh, you know, some of the other, uh, I think, passages I would like to share today is one from the Ephesians, and it's 518.19. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. And that's really what our intention is, is to connect, you know, universally and to be able to bring that sense of love through our music. And and as I said, you know, there is um, 
of universal language through music, you know, that we can't necessarily uh, always communicate through language because our feelings, you know, can also uh, transcend words sometimes. Um, and so you look at, you know, what does emotion really mean? Emotion stays with us. And it is something that connects back to the relationship that we have to ourselves and others. And in this case, as we're talking about today, our relationship to God. And in our memories, we store um, within our brains, in the hippocampus, in the limbic region of the brain, we store our memories of experiences. And they can be social experiences that could emit feelings of happiness or they could emit feelings of sadness. And that all of this happens in the, in the context of culture. Um, and so, you know, as I said, I think it's important to understand and appreciate our differences on a cultural level, too. And that, you know, this is part of God's bigger plan for us, um, that, that we love one another. So I think, you know, if we think about music, it addresses um, these key life concepts that I've been talking about here, which are trauma, loss, life balance, resilience, sustainability, and finding purpose and meaning. And, you know, if we don't find that purpose and meaning in life, as I said before, we can feel lost or we can feel misdirected or as if we don't have a sense of belonging. And I know that many people are feeling that these days, feeling very disconnected and um, years ago, John Bradshaw studied shame, and he was an evangelist. And he brought it to the public through public television. And he talked about the kind of culture that we are uh, supporting out there in which people focus so much on material gain and defining themselves and their identity through their belongings. Um, and they, uh, again, get very lost in all of that and you know, don't always understand themselves at a deep level because they become identified with what they have rather than being, you know, and just being who they are and, and identifying themselves through the gifts that God has given them and using those to improve their lives. So, you know, it's a human condition that sometimes, uh, you know, these things also, as I said before, supersede privilege. And these concepts and challenges are common, you know, to every man, regardless of race and color and wealth or social position. Um, and so, you know, I think about music and its power to heal. Um, you know, when you hear a voice and it resonates in your heart, you know, and it touches you in such a way, it can, it can bring a tear to your eye. Um, you know, sometimes words can do that. But there's something about the human voice when it's raised to the spirit in that way that is so touching and so healing um, that we, we feel a sense of joy about it. So that's been, you know, really the drive. And through this, it's led me to work with people from all around the world. And um, this, you know, point in time, We've written, co-written about 500 songs, and our songs are in all different genres, and they're not always, um, you know, gospel or spiritual songs. Um, but I've been fortunate in that I found some individuals um, who have the same kind of intention in mind as, as what I'm discussing here today. And so when we write spiritual or gospel songs, um, you know, they... they relate to one another um, in that same way that I'm talking about here, you know. So we found those roots, and we've been able to express it through the music. Um, but, you know, you can find a message in, that's healing in any kind of music. So whether you're listening to blues or you're listening to jazz or Motown or fusion music of some time, and even hip-hop, you know, it can transcend all genres and people can join in the universal quest to unite and find more of a collective consciousness and a way of bringing that acceptance and love. Um, and it's always existed in you know, every circle. It's just how do we uh, tap into it 
or how do we relate to the music and so that it, you know, brings us closer together in that way. Because as I said earlier, music evokes memories. And so we have this wide range of emotions and they have social meaning um, in that context of culture. Um, and we can communicate these messages through words, but not in the same powerful way as you can through music. Um, and so that's really what we are looking for here, you know, because there's truth in this. We can re-experience our memories through music. Like if you think about it, you could uh, hear a song and it can bring you back to an earlier time in your life or a place in your life or a relationship, you know, and even when we lose people that we love, um, when we hear music that they liked, it makes us connect to them and we can feel their presence. Uh, so there's this concept of synchronicity that exists with music and, um, you know, it's a way that we join, um, that's the synchronicity of it, and it's a journey, you know, that is a mind, body, and spirit journey because we not only feel the emotions in our minds or in our brains, we feel it through our entire bodies and through our spirit, and it's uplifting. Uh, there is a lot of music out there that can, you know, communicate negative uh, energy, and we really try to avoid that um, because the world is in need of healing, <laughs> and we need oh. to really uh, help each other. I think at this point in time, yeah. So. Amen, amen, and amen again. Kingdom. Our topic of discussion for this episode is healing through music. Kingdom music has healing powers. There is no doubt that music can play an integral role in our healing. It has been recorded and documented that people with brain injuries have had success with music therapy because it often bypasses the damaged areas, allowing people to regain movement or speech. In this way, music can change the structure of the brain. Sister Stefan, the healing power in music is very real, like you have said. I think what the Lord wants us to help the listeners realize is that God designed it to do so and maybe shed a little light into where the source and power comes from. In Scripture, the first mention of music is in Genesis, the fourth chapter, in the 20th through the 22nd verses. Verse 20, Ada bore Jabal. He was the father of those who dwell in tents and have cattle and purchase possessions. Verse 21, his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all those who played the lyre and pipe. Verse 22, Zillabor Jubalcain, he was the forger of all cutting instruments of bronze and iron. So Jubal is known as the inventor of music, and Jabal was the maker of the instruments. They were brothers. Their parents were Lamak and Ada. They were the descendants of Cain. Now, Kingdom, the first song in the Bible is the song of Moses found in the book of Exodus in the 15th chapter. Kingdom, you know the story of Israel who had been living as slaves for 400 years when God sends a deliverer through Moses and through a series of incredible miracles and plagues under Pharaoh until Pharaoh relents and lets God's people go. Now, the Song of Moses edifies the victory, which is another healing component to music called the lyrics. Kingdom music is a vital part of heaven and the throne of God. It has been a part of the worship and praise of God since the beginning. Kingdom Lucifer was created as a beautiful archangel and anointed cherub and music was an integral part of his being. And you can read about Lucifer's creation in Ezekiel the 28th chapter. 
The books of Psalm contain the lyrics and the keys or triads to writing songs of worship and praise and adoration of God, which is principal or the chief role for the creation of music, for the worship, the exaltation, and the adoration of our Most High God. That's where the miracles and the power to alter the mind and the heart comes from. Now, Kingdom, along with the instruments and the instrumentation created in Lucifer were beautiful stones, jewels, and colors, which were all symbolic of the Son of the Living God. And when Lucifer and the third of the angels supporting Lucifer rebelled because Lucifer decided that he should be at the same level as the Son of the Living God or in the worship in heaven, Jesus declared, in Luke 10 and 18, his fall. So now, because of Satan's sin, God literally removed the anointing, the beauty of Christ and the glory of God from Lucifer, which is why demons look so hideous, because they no longer have the glory of God, the spirit of God, and the beauty of Christ. My last point to tie everything together is in 1 Samuel the 16th chapter and the 14th through the 23rd verses where David plays the harp and brings relief to Saul from the evil spirits that were tormenting Saul, which brings it all together that the healing power in music is God, and God created music with that divine power intentionally to heal, and because of the tumultuous and vicious cycles of God's anointed and God's divine creation being interrupted and perverted by sin, rebellion, and disobedience from the fall of Lucifer to Adam and Eve, which gave birth to the line of Cain in this earth dimension, is the foundation of the healing power that comes through music, even in a world that remains unrepentant. Yet, we can still witness the love of God and the love of Christ by the movement of God the Holy Spirit, which is the power source of the healing miracles that come through music. And the purpose is for the repentance of the hearers to turn their hearts to God through Christ. Sister Stephan, please give the final words on our topic of discussion, healing through music. Well, first I want to say thank you for that wonderful explanation of the history of music in regards to the Bible and the connections to God. Uh, these are things and all that, some of which I, I didn't know. So it's really wonderful to hear that explanation um, that you shared with us. Um, the other thing you were just talking about that really touched my heart is that you talked about the healing powers of music with people with brain injuries. And early in my career, I worked as a music therapist. And I brought music to um, the elderly, to the disabled, and to our veterans who had post-traumatic stress disorder. And I witnessed, you know, the power of music in terms of people with in specific memory impairment. And, you know, they might have trouble remembering what happened 30 seconds ago, so short-term memory impairment. But when I would play my guitar and sing, they would remember all the lyrics to the song and they would sing along and they'd become very animated and they would experience happiness, you know, and momentarily, you know, it would take them out of the trauma and loss that they were experiencing. Um, but it could also affect their mood for the rest of the day. So, you know, music is very powerful in that way and it does have the potential, as you say, to change brain chemistry and to release those chemicals that make us feel positive emotion and to make us feel happiness. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier that there are six emotions that are considered universal, uh, and those emotions are anger, disgust, fear, happiness, sadness, and surprise. 
and these these emotions can be read on you know people's faces no matter if we're from the same culture or not and you'll see it in response to music you know that these emotions are experienced and are coming to life through the music when people hear it um, so one of the things I also wanted to leave as a thought here today in our discussion, I, you know, I mentioned my six concepts around the, the idea of repentance and why that's important in life in order to keep us healthy. Um, because if we experience trauma and loss, we can feel a sense of abandonment. And when we make unhealthy moral decisions, we in effect abandon ourselves. And we may fear that God has abandoned us, but that's not necessarily true because God is all forgiving Um, and that we need to seek that life balance in order to have resilience and in order to sustain health in life and it's important that we find our purpose and meaning and that we work to overcome the shame that can sometimes rob us of our joy and our sense of purpose in life that we were put here with God's intention to use our gifts So we're not defined by our shame, trauma, or loss. And it's all about how we manage our emotions in response to it and how we appreciate our relationship to God. And I think those are my final words for our discussion today, Apostle Ross, and I really appreciate being here with you. Amen. Clarissa, Stefan, please introduce yourself to the kingdom. Well, um, one of the things I guess I would like people to know about me is that I've spent my career as a psychologist, and I've worked with all kinds of people of all ages, so from infants through uh, geriatric patients, and um, I'm also trained as a naturopath, and naturopathy has its roots in ministry. Um, And so there's the connection to wellness and the connection to natural healing and the connection to an interest in the Bible and its teachings. Um, And as you said, I'm an international singer-songwriter, and I've been very fortunate to find people who share my intentions to bring healing to the world through music and uh, was able to start my project um, called Round the Globe. And that started in 2019. And uh, since that time, like I said, we've co-written 500 songs and written with individuals from 30 different countries. Uh, And so I'm really having a lot of fun with it at this point in time. I just feel very blessed to be able to do that. And what are your websites and social medias so that the public can learn more about you? Okay, if they go to roundtheglobemusic.com, they can learn more about our project, and you'll get to see pictures of all the wonderful people, artists and uh, lyricists and producers and singer-songwriters who are involved in the project, and some articles uh, I write every month in a magazine called um, Right Away, which is a lyrics magazine because I'm a lyricist. Um, And so you can see some of our articles there. And there's an article I wrote on message music, a universal genre that you can download from the site there. So um, roundtheglobemusic.com. And if you're interested in downloading some of our music, you can go to roundtheglobe.hearnow.com. Dot com. So that's H-E-A-R-N-O-W dot com, around the globe, here now dot com, um, to hear some of the wonderful music we've been doing. Um, and you can also find Round the Globe on Facebook. Um, and if you just, and it's not around the globe, it's round the globe. I just want to differentiate that so people won't have trouble finding us. Um, and then I also am on Facebook. Um, and Clarissa is my legal name, and I often go by Claire, C L A R E, Claire Stephan. So you'll find me that way. Our music is on Apple Music for download uh, through Round the Globe, um, and also on Spotify and Pandora, and pretty much any place where you can download music, you'll find us. Uh, so. I hope people will go out and seek us and uh, you know, enjoy some of the music we've been doing. 
And please tell us about the music being featured during this podcast. We just heard Round the Globe, and we're getting ready to hear An Eagle's View. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, Round the Globe um, was a song that was initiated um, by a new friend I have. Um, Chibuzer is his name, and he is from Nigeria. And he wanted to write a theme song for our project and that fit the intentions of what we're doing, which is bringing healing words through music to families and to homes all across the world. And so... Um, this song was co-written with Chibuzer and also a wonderful composer from Argentina. His name is Raul Barba. And um, the interesting thing about Chibuzer and Raul is that they're both music um, ministers in, in one way or another in their churches in their countries. Uh, and so I feel very, very fortunate to have found them and to have um, this song that represents our our mission or our intention. Um, And then the other song, In Eagle's View, uh, was I found this young man also from Nigeria, Francis Mikel Iloho. And um, he is very talented, uh, and he wrote the music. And then I sent it again to Raul Barba, the composer in Argentina, who then... um, put it to a uh, full you know, production, um, and the three of us sing that song. And, and, and it's just really wonderful to be able to have these voices um, from different parts of the world and to combine our message. But with the Eagle's View, I think that one was influenced by, um, I've always loved um, the verse from Isaiah 40, 31. You know, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on weak wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Uh, and that was in my mind when I wrote the lyrics for that one, and that sometimes in life we need to take that eagle's view to remember all the wonderful things that life brings us and to you know, appreciate everything that life has to give us and ourselves and our relationship to God. And how may the kingdom support your ministry and purchase your music? Well, I think the biggest thing that would be helpful is for people to really take the time to enjoy some of our music and to connect to the intention of healing through music and to um, be able to share that with them, their families and friends and to strengthen their relationship with others through music. Um, That would really be a blessing to be able to do that. And, you know, to be able to download some of our music, that's always helpful. We always appreciate that. Or even if they just go into YouTube and, um, oh, by the way, they can find it through Clarissa Steffen, S-T-E-F-F-E-N, and Clarissa is C-L-A-R-I-S-S-A. So just listening to our music, appreciating it, sharing it, and feeling the healing powers through music, that would be a really wonderful thing for us. Amen. And Kingdom, the music of Clarissa Stephan is in rotation on Let's Talk to the Lord Radio dot international. Kingdom, Let's Talk to the Lord can be heard on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Alexa, and YouTube. You may download episodes from speaker.com found under Let's Talk to the Lord with apostrophe S. We are live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Time on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast.com. And every Every Saturday at 11 a.m. Central Time from Sensational Sounds Radio dot net. Please write to us at Let's Talk to the Lord at Yahoo dot com. Please follow us on Twitter at Ross Apostle. Please visit our website Let's Talk to the Lord Radio dot international. Please download our app on your Play Store for your cell phones found under Let's Talk to the Lord Radio. You can now ask Alexa 
to play Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International and Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show. We are now on Roku. To find us on Roku, go to your MyTuner Radio app, search on your Roku, and then search Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Station. If you would like to listen to the podcast on your Roku, just search out your iHeart Radio app on your Roku, and then Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio radio talk show. Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International is your 24-hour station for talk news, radio interviews, and Christian music. On Amazon, order our book, Spiritual Guidance Through Alzheimer's Disease with author Kimberly V. Porter. All of my music are available on Amazon and to all digital stores. Lord, Give Me Another Chance, featuring Sean E. Scales and Tamara Lloyd. And my first EP, Remember Now Thy Creator, featuring King David the Vessel, A New Duo and Doctrine, is also still available, but under the name Minister John E. Roth. So, Kingdom, until next time, may God bless you, and may God keep you. Living your lives at the foot of the cross under a open heaven. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. You, you, honey goes to you, you, you. The eagle is the king of the sky. He flies bold and free. Reminding us to soar high. Lord, open my eyes that I might see. Oh, why this messenger? Yeah.